Everyone knows the work of Shigeru Miyamoto. You've got your Zeldies, your Star Foxos, your Pick, Min, but what about his more unknown stuff? More specifically, what if this game was so known of because it's the most unknown work by him? Hmm? Enter Mole Mania. Released in 1996 and 1997 around the world, it was developed by Nintendo EAD and PAX Sofnica. Released a bit in the twilight years of the Game Boy, at least if the release of the Game Boy Color is to be considered, this puzzler is rarely discussed. The protagonist, Muddy Mole, never appeared in another game, which is very weird for a Nintendo character, let alone one associated with Miyamoto. Didn't even appear in a Smash Bros game. I for one only own this because I found it in the bargain bin of a retro gaming store, and it reminded me of Monty Mole. I had no idea of its connection to Miyamoto until much later on. But we can't lament on what could have been. Instead, let's now focus on his lone opus. Muddy Mole is in a bit of a pickle. The game's Mario-like antagonist, Jinbi, whose occupation is split between being a cabbage farmer and the ruler of Jinbi land, has kidnapped Muddy's wife and his seven children. Muddy's goal is, of course, to save them by making his way through seven different worlds. There will be all sorts of critters in his path doing Jinbi's bidding, and the successful traversal of each world will net Muddy exactly one baby mole. Muddy himself has no special power. Naturally, he can dig, but otherwise, the completion of each screen will rely on his noggin. There are all sorts of objects in the environment that he can use to his advantage to beat foes and solve levels. Each puzzle screen is laid out in a grid, kind of like Bomberman. Also like Bomberman, the idea is to push objects around on the screen, although these don't explode. The ultimate goal is to push a black ball to a gate. Once the gate is bowled over, the game can be progressed. This ball can be pushed, pulled, as well as thrown, but the grid layout means that it will need to be manipulated in a very specific way. Think of a Sam Lloyd sliding block puzzle. I'm sure that would make an interesting Vsauce video. The main mechanic with Mole Mania, however, the one gimmick, if you will, is the fact that Muddy can mole his way underground. So, each level, in essence, is multi-tiered. There is everything going on above ground, which consists of the enemies and other various objects I'll explain soon, but each level is solvable by how it interacts with the unseen underworld. It's a nice twist on the classic tile being pushed on a grid puzzler that was so ubiquitous in the 80s and 90s. Digging a hole will be permanent, however, so thought must be put into their locations. Luckily, you can peek your head up while underground without fear of losing health from an enemy. This is handy since a hole in the wrong place can screw up the entire puzzle. Also, if the ball rolls into a hole, it will reset to its spawning point. Moving an object to the wrong place at the wrong time will regularly render the whole attempt futile too. Many levels can be solved a few different ways, but some will need an exact solution that will require much trial and error. Luckily, there are unlimited redos, and the puzzles are short enough that it's not too much of an inconvenience to abandon ship and retry many times until you get it. All in all, there are 175 puzzle screens, so there is plenty of content here to keep you going since the puzzles are quite good. Not too difficult that you'll be pulling your hair out, but hard enough that you'll have to work on most for at least a little bit, but that aha moment is always a very satisfying feeling. Getting the ball from A to B isn't as simple as pushing it in the right directions as there are plenty of enemies roaming around the levels. Muddy can't attack them directly, just them touching you will result in lost health. However, he can bowl them over with the balls and other objects. As the game progresses, the enemies get harder and harder to defeat. Eventually, you have to deal with foes that can also go underground or float around in random patterns. It's not compulsory to defeat an enemy to progress as any stragglers will quite literally explode when the ball reaches the gate, but they will get in your way in the meantime. Health is, of course, a concern, and if you lose four segments, it will be game over. This isn't a huge deal because there are unlimited redos, and the game saves at the completion of every screen, but if you only have one segment of health left, an annoying alarm will sound until the health is replenished or you die. This can be achieved by either finding health pickups or depositing a number of cabbages into holes where they belong. Should be noted that these can be used to slay enemies too, but unlike other objects, once they're down the hole, that's it. They don't respawn even if you reset a level. With so many levels, it's great that the developers have introduced so much variety in the gameplay. Game mechanics are introduced gradually, and fortunately, these are explained in-game by signs scattered around the game world. This was handy since I was unable to locate a PDF scan of the instruction manual. While at the start the levels would just include the black ball, more and more objects appear as you play. For instance, blockers are heavy weights that can be pushed but not 
pulled. You'll have to think carefully about where you move these. If it gets pushed up against the wall for example, likely the level will be unsolvable. Another example are barrels which can be pushed into holes, but again, once they're in a hole, they can't be moved again. You also block that route underground. Other aspects are built into the levels. Permanent arrows will move things in a predetermined direction, and the puzzle will have to be solved around them. There are also types of ground that can have objects moved onto them, although Muddy himself can't tread. I'm not going to list off every single facet of the game, but combined, equal a tremendous amount of variety. To switch things up, there are boss fights at the end of each level, as well as hidden bonus rounds. The boss fights aren't very difficult at all, as like the regular levels, rely more on cunning, more than reflexes. This is lucky, since Muddy doesn't move around the levels very gracefully at all. This is more of an issue in the bonus rounds. These require you to dump as many cabbages as possible within a time limit, while Jimby himself chases after you. The controls are just not made for this sort of gameplay at all. It's very clunky to move around quickly, making those levels quite frustrating. Luckily, they're completely optional. Mole Mania also includes a multiplayer mode, but for the most part, it's a bit of a mystery to me. The thing is, two Game Boys, two copies of the game, and a link cable are required to versus someone, so I, unfortunately, was unable to test that for this review. What I do know is that it's based around the bonus game. One player is Jimby, while the other is Muddy, and players can duke it out over 16 different maps. The Jimby player can throw his hoe, which is the only direct attack I can think of in the entire game, while Muddy can obtain boots that temporarily grant him a speed advantage. The graphics are your standard mid-90s fare. They're detailed enough for their purpose, and the characters specifically are animated with a lot of charm, but there's nothing groundbreaking here. However, as a nice touch, there are comical interludes each time you rescue a young'un. This adds a bit of personality to Muddy, representing him as a bit of a doofus in the nicest Nintendo way possible. There's also support for the Game Boy Player, and all the footage you see in this video is captured using just that. The colours are tactfully applied, and there's even a custom border. While this is nicely drawn, it's far too distracting to keep on continuously. A nice touch though. If you're curious, this is what the game looks like on a DMG, which is how most would have played it back in the day. Pretty much the same really, but monochrome. However, I much prefer the colours with the Game Boy Player, as objects on screen are more defined. The music is okay too, incorporating several catchy tracks that might get stuck in your head, but the fact that there is only a few of them can get grating, especially when you're stuck on a puzzle. I assume this is because of space limitations however, so I won't personally hold it against Miyamoto. Mole Mania is a great puzzle game, but the way it's presented for playability is a huge plus. The game saves to an internal battery every time you finish a screen, and since there are so many different short levels, there's no pressure at all to finish something before having to turn your Game Boy off. There's a huge emphasis towards picking it up and then putting it back down again at a moment's notice, and that's exactly how a handheld game should be. I have noticed that Mole Mania is starting to creep up in price. As of filming, most listings on eBay go for between 20 to 30 American dollars, which is a far cry from the tenor in Australian Monopoly money I paid 3 or 4 years ago. But luckily, it was also released on the 3DS Virtual Console in 2012, so that's another much cheaper option. 